Welcome to the Industry Experts Panel at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Holliday. Today, we are welcoming to the show Mr. David Smith. David is the Senior Analyst at the Morgan Report, and we're watching prices of precious metals begin to move. The Morgan Report is predicting that we are in the very early stages of a massive, precious metals bull market. So today we're going to be talking about the prices of silver and gold, the upcoming virtual Sprott Natural Resource Symposium, and how to position yourself for what could be a massive move in both silver and gold. David, welcome to the show. How are you today? It's great to be with you, Michelle. This is a very exciting time for us and going forward over the next several years, I think it's going to be really amazing. We are excited and so ready for this, David. We want to start off by talking about this massive breakout in gold prices that we're already seeing, but we question whether or not this actually could be a true shift in the market. Now, as I mentioned at the Morgan Report, you are predicting that we are indeed at the beginning of a massive metals bull market. So what are the circumstances which specifically make up this kind of favorable position and what makes this time look so amazing for metals? I think we're in the second inning of this game and it's a layered process of going through resistance which is held for a number of years. This week, we had multiple closes above $1,800 in gold, which had not happened for eight or nine years. Uh, silver is knocking above $19, which had been intermediate resistance. We have layers to go before a true breakout takes place, uh, going through 20 and $21 in silver as an example, and moving up above $1,850 and toward $1,900 and $2,000 for gold. But what's interesting is that the mining stocks have been kind of presaging this for some weeks. They've been very strong. They give back their gains begrudgingly, and they've held on to most of what they've done. And so the mining stocks are changing the metrics from what they've been for a number of years, and they, going forward, are actually going to perform better in relationship to gold and silver than they have in the past seven or eight years, which is really going to benefit people that not only hold the physical metal, but also the miners themselves. And, of course, this is an area... These three areas are one which Sprott, uh, the symposium, and the people that present there are really, really experts. Now, David, I want to take a moment to acquaint our audience with the upcoming 2020 Sprott Natural Resource Symposium, which is going to be virtual and online this year. And because that makes for an amazing opportunity for anyone who has never had the chance to attend a natural resources conference, this one is going to be filled with epic speakers, Rick Rule, Keith Newmeyer, and the best of the best in the junior mining resources industry. And you, of course, will be the speaker representing the Morgan Report at this year's symposium. So go ahead and talk to us about this year's event? You know, Michelle, I'm really honored to be invited to present at Sprout this year. I attended last year on the media day and introduced a few presenters. And you know what I found, and I think other people that attend this one virtually will find, if you pick up just one idea that you hadn't thought about or one company that you didn't know about, it will pay for a year cost, which is a fraction of what it would have been last year, many times over. It happened to me. Uh, I found a company I knew nothing about and was very intrigued with, took a position in it, a small position, and I'm up about 10x from where I went in and it paid for my uh, attendance there many times over. So the wealth of information that's going to be available this year uh, is just stunning. Everyone should really take advantage of the fact that it's going to be completely virtual and online this year because the timing could not be better in terms of investing in junior mining stocks. And the date, um, Wednesday, right? July the 22nd through Saturday, July the 25th. Is that correct? That is correct. And you know, my understanding on this is that not only will there be replays throughout the, the evening and the next morning, of, if you couldn't attend it at, you know, at the real time, but also the people that are attendees will be able to access the archives, I've been told, until the end of the year. So there's no way that you're not going to be able to hear every single uh, thing that's done there. Uh, if you can't make it that day or, or one of the days or even that week, 
you're still on board and you're not going to lose anything by not being there in the real time when it's done in the virtual space. Absolutely. And if you go online and you check out the speakers and the membership there, it's just stellar. Truly is the best of the best. It's very exciting this year. Now, you, as I mentioned at the top of this show, are the senior analyst at the Morgan Report. And your founder, David Morgan, is a great friend to this show. And there is no one better in the industry. So we're very excited about the picture that you are predicting right now. So staying with the topic of precious metals. Gold is at the highest that it's ever been, and silver is looking amazing. So let's focus in on silver for a moment, David. From everything that you've been watching, what are your thoughts and your predictions when it comes to silver? Well, you know, just backtracking a tiny bit, gold is now uh, registering in all-time highs in every currency except the U.S. dollar. And that will change, we believe, fairly soon, perhaps before the end of this year. What tends to happen with silver, and it, it kind of throws people off their game a little bit if they're not aware of this, but both David and I, before we even met each other, were active in the last bull market, a major bull market that ended in 1980. But what will happen is that gold and silver move in the same general direction of over 90% of the time, but not on a day-to-day -day or even a week-to-week -week basis. And what we found is that gold will move up uh, sharply over a period of time, and silver will sit there and lag, and people will think that's a non-confirmation, but that's really the way silver behaves. And then all of a sudden, unpredictably, silver will make its own launch itself, and often it will rise two or three times faster and farther than gold did. And what I found out personally in 1980 when I was playing that market from about 1974 to 80, is that in, when it really got underway in 78 and 79, Gold would move for a week or so, and silver would sit there, and then it would take over, and it was like a tag team. And I think we're going to see something very similar going forward. David, do you have any predictions, any prices in mind by the end of, say, 2020? It's really difficult to, to put the time frame in there. Let me say this. Rather than the prediction, uh, let me say that it would not surprise me to see silver in the low 20s, perhaps, perhaps even trying to challenge 25 or 26 by the end of the year. And it doesn't matter to me whether it actually gets there by then. I think it will be there early next spring. The thing is, silver is so unpredictable that it, you just have to be uh, along for the ride. And you can't wait until the market gives you all the signals and the reasons. The, the reasons will come later. The price will come first. So that's why it's important to get the information you need now when things are relatively quiet, when silver and gold are bumping up against intermediate resistance. Take your positions, get some physical, buy some of the best mining stocks, and many of the ones that you're going to hear uh, at the Sprott Conference are ones that you really want to look into deeply. And, you know, this is one of the only conferences that I know of where the presenters of these companies that show up are invited by Sprott. They don't just show up with some money and say, we'd like a booth. They actually are invited by Sprott because Sprott has confidence in them and in many, if not most cases, actually owns some of the shares in their company. So these are almost, it's almost like a double, triple vetting process. The people that attend this conference and listen to these presenters are going to be getting some of the best of the best in the entire sector. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Let's stay with the topic of mining stocks just for a moment. What general type of mining stock do you personally invest in and what is your own criteria as an analyst? The Morgan Report has this, an asset allocation table where we recommend certain stocks uh, of different parts of the sector, uh, put in uh, you know, the safer stocks, which won't go up as much on a percentage basis, but the majors who are more safe to own, and then the juniors, which have a little higher level of risk to the producers, but yet they may go up two or three times as much, and then small money into exploration stocks that uh, are much more risky, but if they make a big fine, uh, they could go up uh, 10, 20, 30 times as much. So a small amount can bring back what we call an asymmetric risk. And I do a lot of the same thing in my own uh, holdings. I have some of the ones that we have in the asset allocation tables and some that I found on my own. But I really like to look for stocks that are, especially in today's environment and going forward, where the companies are leaving a relatively small footprint for the work that they're doing and digging materials and metals out of the ground and that they uh, are closely aligned with the locals in these different countries. 
uh, where they're producing and where they're exploring and where they have good solid management, which has proven before that they can deliver the goods for shareholders. These are all things that I look forward to. And when I find a company like that, it really turns my radar on and I dig deeply into looking into the story. Uh, COVID has kind of kept us from doing much traveling lately, but I frequently uh, have toured throughout the Americas, occasionally into Asia, to look at companies that look like they would have unusual potential for uh, Morgan Reports subscribers and also uh, that are interesting to myself as well. Wow. Now, where all have you been on behalf of the Morgan Reports? Well, I've been to many sites in Canada, uh, many sites in Mexico. I've been to Bolivia to look at a couple stories. I've been to Argentina many times, and I've been to uh, China a couple of times. So uh, I have not been to Africa. There are people that are more widely traveled than I am. Uh, that's fine, but I, I kind of specialize in these areas, and I love going to Yukon and to BC's uh, Golden Triangle area and back in the Timmins uh, Belt. So those are really places I love to go. And, of course, Mexico uh, has produced something like a quarter of all the silver that's ever been produced has come out of the, the Mexican silver belts. And so there's a lot of exciting stories going on there now. In addition, Nevada, which a lot of people don't know this, but Nevada usually is the third or the fourth highest production of gold annually in the world, and people wouldn't imagine that, but it's really an amazing place to be. So there's a lot going on in, in uh, North America and South America. Uh, you know, I follow, have not been to Australia, but I'm following several fascinating stories there. And oftentimes we will bring these stories to Morgan Report readers that are not formal representations, rep uh, recommendations, but it'll be something like a first look at. And uh, there's an exciting story in Japan going on. So we're, we're kind of keeping tabs on wherever things are happening, and we bring these to our readers, and I look at them for myself as well. It's just a very fascinating topic. And now that the primary trend after about eight or nine years of a bear market from 2011 is now firmly uh, in, in scouts in moving higher, uh, this is where the sweet spot is, where people – the public recognition has started happening, but the majority of the public is not in yet. The stocks are off of their lows, but they have a number of X's more to go on the upside. And so attending the conference right now, I can't think of a better time than getting in when things are a little bit sideways in the summer before the fall strength comes in, which brings us usually strong markets from September through right in through February and March of the following year. Right. And the fact that it's virtual and completely online, because many people with their um, symposiums and conferences, they do online streaming, but the entire conference is not online. But this year, because it needs to be virtual, people get the chance to see every single speaker and everything that's going on. And as I mentioned before, this is a stellar power player list of people. List some people that will be part of the conference this year virtually. Well, you know, of course, there's Rick Rule at Sprott and uh, uh, Peter Groskopf, the CEO, was there. And I learned something from listening to a video that he did a couple months ago that completely uh, reprioritized my thinking on my own portfolio. Keith Barron will be there. And, you know, I know Keith personally, uh, honored to be uh, a colleague and a friend of his. He made uh, one of the largest gold discoveries in Ecuador in 2006 that has happened in the last 25 years. He'll be talking about a new discovery he's working on in Ecuador that, well, in addition, it may well be another huge gold-silver discovery, but also a copper uh, discovery. So, uh, you, you know, the, the names that are there are just absolutely stellar. And I'll be listening to every one of these presentations myself and taking notes. Uh, it's just a wonderful uh, target-rich environment for people that want to come and learn and add to their own knowledge base. And uh, if you don't take some really valuable things away from this, you're just not paying as much attention as you should. But I think just actually being there virtually and listening to these conferences, it's just hard for you not to really come away uh, with a much enhanced knowledge basis for your own uh, edification and acting on your own plan going forward. Right. Now, David, from your perspective, do you see an upside for base metals? Kind of yes and no. First of all, it's so difficult to predict how the global economy is going to bounce back from COVID. 
and it may well be subdued for several years. However, there are some very bright spots in there. Copper is already making very strong gains. And, you know, copper, silver, and gold, and I make this point in my own presentation, they have, uh, they're, they're similar in certain ways in terms of their metrics and different in others. But uh, all three of them share some very similar uh, things in that uh, it's very difficult to find new major discoveries in recent years. The grades for copper, silver, and gold production are going down. They have to dig up more ore to get the same amount of ounces and pounds out of the ground. It takes longer when you do find a discovery to put it into production. And all these things are pushing what I would call a subduction zone underneath the supply zone of these metals, uh, clashing up against a demand which has been through the roof going forward. And this is what's, what's something that I think people aren't realizing here at this point, many are, is that this is not just going to be a North American story of investment or for a few people from Europe uh, going on to this, this is the first time in our lifetimes which will be a global massive bull market in the metals and the miners. In Asia, for example, India sucked up th almost 40% of the silver produced globally last year. China, uh, 10 years ago, exported 200 million ounces of silver. They don't export anything now, and they bring it in through the SGE COVID didn't even slow it down, their addition to silver uh, to the uh, Shanghai Gold Exchange. So this is a global thing, and it's going to add a, a massive, massive tailwind to the prices and the uh, push that's going to happen to these mining stocks all over the world as more people join in. And that's why it's going to be something that uh, I am fascinated to be involved with, and I feel privileged to be working with David Morgan. Uh, to, uh, you know, to get the word out to people, our subscribers, and to this free letter each week, just how important this is. It's something you do not want to miss. Absolutely. I want to stay with this massive bull run just for a moment. Is there any time that you could look back and say that's comparable to the position that we are in right now? It's really difficult to say because the 1979 market was more self-contained, even though we saw record high prices then. I think if we look at the beginning of this uh, century, when the market got started around 2001, 2002, went on up into 2011 and had that major top, which by the way, David Morgan called within two days of that, night, uh, that top in, in uh, silver. Uh, gold made a top later that year, I believe it was in September in 2011. But, you know, we had this uh, terrible uh, bear market, which uh, took stocks down by 80 or 90 percent, the very best stocks, clear down into late 2015. It took silver down 75 percent. It took gold down 45 percent. We had a false rally that ran for six months uh, into 2016, and then it gave a, a lot of it back until uh, late last year. So I, I think t the 2016 run to me, even though it only lasted six months, is a, is a comparable one because prices went up and up and up. And some of the best people in the business were saying, taking profits in that first month or two or three, uh, you know, or watching for these resistance points, which the market cut through like a knife to butter. And I think what's going to happen when gold gets up, and especially when it hits $2,000 an ounce, this is when the public is going to catch on fire you know, all the millennials trading over at Robinhood, they're going to want to get on board these things. And the mining stocks are going to be on fire at that point. And so that plus the fact of silver going up into the $30 and $40 area and what I call volcanic tremors between $26 and $49, and then a pyroclastic explosion when it breaks out above 50 that's when it's really going to catch things on fire. And people getting involved now and making informed choices before then are going to be able to just sit back and not do much trading at all and just watch things go. It's going to be a very exciting time to be involved. And the tailwinds that I and others will be discussing at the Sprott Conference are going to make it actually more beneficial to be involved in this phase than it was in the 2000 to 2011, because for the first time in many years, Gold stocks look like they're set to outperform the metal, which they should because they're riskier. And so you're going to be getting more bang for the buck for what you do, I believe, than anything that you might have done for the last several decades. 
explore that just a little bit more for us, what you're going to be speaking about at the symposium. I'm going to be mentioning some of the tailwinds that I alluded to here. The fact that the miners have underperformed for many years and have now broken out of a, a triangle that has held them in check for about a decade. And in certain ways, you can make the case that the mining stocks, even today, are as undervalued as they've been for the last 80 years. This is something that just doesn't come along very often, and in this case, once in a lifetime. Also, the fact that we have a global uh, bull market building in the metals, not only in terms of supply, but demand. And it means that more people are involved, and inevitably, you get this situation where uh, what, you know, Marin Katusa, who will be one of the main speakers also at the, um, at the Sprott Conference, calls, uh, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out. And it's something we all have to protect against, but it's going to become almost like some kind of a, a virus at some point where people are going to be uh, on, the, on the Internet saying, you know, I, I, I sold my home to buy gold and uh, you can't lose and all this kind of stuff. And, of course, that's when people like the ones who are listening today and the ones who are speaking at the Sprott Conference plan. And, you know, it's an individual thing. That's why we don't try to give financial advice. We can't legally do that, and we can't morally do that, because everybody listening has a different circumstance, different risk tolerance, different uh, time frame, different goals, different financial situation. But if they take what they learn here and add to what they're doing, put together their own unique plan, and then execute that plan. And that's so important is the execution. They, I believe that they will be getting more benefit for the, what they put into it than they have ever done in decades, maybe in their entire lifetime. I feel that way myself. I find myself staying up late at night doing research on these companies and looking for entry points. And I'm telling you that, you know, uh, the last seven or eight years, Rick Rule talked about this. He said, We've gone through the pain, now get ready for the gain. And it was very painful. Nobody thought it was going to go as long as it did or drop as far as it did. And the tailwinds that are pushing these mining stocks, which you can build a case that they are the lowest they've been in relationship to other equities and even to the metals than they've been in the last 40 to 80 years. You can see charts showing both of these things. So uh, you just can't get it better than this. This is something you don't want to miss. Uh, there's no point in trying to wait for the next one. It's not going to be anything like this. Beautiful. So there is no way that this is another one of those false rallies, which scared everyone, really. Well, you know what? There's no way to guarantee anything. But I'll tell you, everything that you can look at points to the fact that this is the real deal. And, you know, gold and silver may hesitate trying to get above, stay above 18 and trying to get above 19, 20, 21 on the silver. But these are things now where the tone of the market has changed. And so as these points are broken through on the upside and they form new bases, which the old resistance becomes new support, you're going to look at it a different way. Not to be frightened when there's a decline, but look at it as an opportunity to add to your positions and, and try to buy into weakness and hold on and listen to the experts. These are people at this conference. I know some of them personally. I respect every one of them. And I'm telling you that these are people who have been and done before. These are not one-trick ponies. Some of these people, have, like Ross Beatty, for example, he's known as the broken slot machine. Almost everything he touches turns to literal gold and silver. He's, he's formed many new mines uh, to put into his companies. He's formed many new companies. And it just goes on and on that these people are the ones you want to listen to because they are operating in their competencies They've shown that they've been able to do it before, and they did it when public uh, acceptance was low that this could happen. And so you want to be on board to follow in, in their footsteps. Yes. Dave, let's shift gears just a little bit, because I want to get your take on the currency printing situation, which has been happening in such an enormous way. From your vantage point, are there any limits to this? In other words, will there come a time that the alleged benefits of overprinting our currency become so obvious that they're so much smaller than the risk and the damage that it's doing upon the actual value of the fiat currency itself? Absolutely. David Morgan has shown conclusively in several studies, and others have backed this up, 
that every paper currency that has ever been created in world history since the time the Chinese first got the idea going has declined to its intrinsic value, which is zero. It's not even worth the ink and the paper it's printed on. And what's happened already, people don't realize this in the United States and in Canada, but for example, since 1913, when the Federal Reserve was started, which has been the primary engine of paper currency creation beyond any backing, and in 1971, when the U.S. went off the gold standard, and by the way, this is the first time in history when no country is on any kind of a metallic standard. Since the Federal Reserve was created, the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar has declined by 98%. Since 1960, it's declined by 80%. Since 2000, it's declined by 44%. So this is an ongoing thing, and it's, it's, it's intentional by the government. The only way they can try to pay off their massive debts is by, deep in, uh, by inflating the currency and making it worth less every year. They actually say, we want 4% inflation every year. And that means every dollar in your pocket will buy four cents less next year than it did this year. That's incredible that they actually say, we want 4% inflation. Exactly. They come right out and admit it. We've got 50% inflation going on in Argentina now. The peso has declined precipitously in Mexico. We've got Zimbabwe to look at what happened there, where it went to trillions to the dollar. Uh, it, it's just on and on. And so this, we don't have to wait for hyperinflation to occur in Canada and the U.S. and North America. It's taking place insidiously, corrosively, month by month by year. And eventually, at some point, it may well happen, but it will not take hyperinflation like we saw in Zimbabwe and currently in Venezuela in order to send gold and silver on moonshots and the mining shares as well. All it takes is the supply-demand differential to do that. This will be icing on the cake, which will help people preserve their wealth as insurance when these things take place over the coming years. That's really interesting that it won't take hyperinflation. It's just the perspective of people and their purchasing and, habits. And one more thing, Michelle. Here's something that I think hardly anybody realizes. The, the Fed can print money uh, in, in, in as much as they want. I mean, it could be hundreds of trillions. But what they don't realize is that at some point, if the confidence is lost in that money, all that money will mean nothing to people when they stop accepting it. And this is what happened in Zimbabwe and Venezuela. So they think that they can keep the market propped up indefinitely by doing this. The game can be pursued for a while, such as keeping the Dow where it is and maybe doubling it from here. But when people finally lose the confidence, it will be like Humpty Dumpty falling off that wall. And I'll tell you, the eggshell will not be put back together again. Once confidence is lost, it does not return. Right. I want to end with our final topic, Dave, as being politics. Do you believe that the elections coming up in November will impact the precious metals industry in any way? I definitely believe so. I don't know how they're gonna turn out, but I do know that almost which way it turns out, or if it doesn't turn out, it's going to create massive, massive uncertainty. And leading up to that, there's going to be the anticipation uh, of however people think it will turn out. And regardless of what they think, they will be seeking the safety of, of gold, silver, and the mining stocks because markets anticipate what's going on. And you know, there's been massive amounts of gold that have been imported into the United States that are being placed in vaults and holes in the ground by the wealthy people in this country. The same thing is going on in Europe, going into Swiss vaults. And there's, even as we see the largest, uh, re, um, vaulting ever recorded in the gold and silver ETFs on exchanges, there's an even larger build that's going on that is kind of off the records, and that's a, that's a supply, uh, and, you know, uh, destruction enhancing by demand of gold and silver by people around the world. In Afghanistan, they're burying it in the ground uh, for the next year, the silver and the gold. And so this is, this is something that is a perfect storm for uh, supply demand and the, 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 the uh, going on of the whatever the politicians turn to do this fall is just going to be like setting fire to a box of dynamite sticks. 
Wow. Sounds almost like hoarding, David. That's part of it. But you know, speculators, and Doug Casey, and he'll be speaking here too, Doug is kind of the, the doyen of all the people that you're going to be hearing there today. I, I listened to him in 1980, the only conference I attended in 1980, and this guy's still going strong. I love that man. He's incredible. Anyway, he talks about speculators. They're not evil. They're just people that see the future ahead of time, and they store up a little bit to keep themselves uh, independent and off the public dole and protect their families. And so speculation is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And you should be, you should be putting things uh, aside for the day when they'll be needed by you and others in your community and your family. It's a very honorable pursuit. Right. And now is the time to purchase physical silver and gold and look into mining stocks. Exactly. Perfect. David, this has been an amazing interview. Please tell everyone how they can follow your work, and also please remind everyone of the dates and how they can attend the virtual Sprott Natural Resource Symposium. They can follow my work at David Morgan's by going to uh, uh, themorganreport.com. David has a free letter that's out that, he can, that people can uh, get to. They can write to support at the Morgan Report if they have specific questions about how to get involved. And um, David presents at a lot of conferences. So, uh, and David and I have written a book, Second Chance, how to, how to Make and Keep Big Money from the Coming Gold and Silver Shockwave. This book will tell you how to make the money and how to keep it, which I don't think any other book does. So this is a, a book that I recommend strongly. And um, also be sure to... To sign up for the Sprout Conference is July 22nd to 25th. Uh, it's going to be an honor to present there. I'm going to be listening to every speaker there, either in real time or going back and listening to the archives, just like you will be if you attended this. So uh, I've, it's been a great pleasure to speak with you today, Michelle, and I wish everybody the very best of this listening to this, and I expect to see many, many of these people that are going to attend the conference to be in the winning circle in just a few years. Absolutely. David, thank you so much for coming on this show today. You bet. Thank you. Mr. David Smith, Senior Analyst at the Morgan Report. For the Industry Experts Panel, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com.